Yo, this is Carter, and you're watching Pen Game 101. Uh, yeah. Check the pen game, check the pen game. Got your favorite rappers going insane. Then we run the gauntlet like the end game. So what you waiting for? Check the pen game. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Justin, editor-in-chief of Rapzilla.com, and we are back with another episode of Pen Game 101. And we got the original crew back. Finally, no one is missing Luke DiMarzio's back, Elijah Matos is here, and we got Cut Right, who's been with me this whole time. And uh, we're super excited today because we're going to be talking about Seam Vergüenza, the 116 Reach Records Latin project, and we are going to have producer Kardak Drums on to play some producer games, which is kind of weird. That's a different thing than we've done before. And he's also going to take us to school with the 101 and tell us about this project that, you know, most of us probably don't know what's happening on it but before we do that let's dive into the tracks this is the pen kick it off luke with the first track donde están thought man i just got a lot of comments on these beats so this is just like a club banger party vibe and there's just a lot of spanish i thought it sounded really dope is like it just sounded great but I had no clue what was going on like you said <laughs> let's preface who's on the track so we got we got Manny Montez, DJ Michael V, Wolf, Akleso, Javier Luisan, Tadashi, and Ada Vitsabi. This joint was snapping. Like, you know, like when somebody praying for you on the prayer line and they breath stink and you just fall out so you ain't got to smell it no more. <laughs> like, this joint gave me that face. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, the B switches was crazy too. I ain't need a translator. Cause the energy that everybody came with was was crazy. It let you know it's gonna be something serious. I thought six nine was gonna come through for a minute though. I was like, how you gonna put a Lamborghini doing wheelies and donuts in my ears? I can't even see it. I hear a Lamborghini in my head spinning with smoke on the tires on the record out the gate. That's one track one. That's track one, my guy. That was an excellent job with that one. Yeah, man, I think what both of you guys have hit at really well is just the energy that uh, Donde Estan brings right out the gate, right? And that's something that never really lets up throughout the whole Sing Vergüenza project. Um, just for some clarification, Donde Estan does translate to where are they? And that's kind of like the whole vibe of the record is like, you know, it's it's utter confidence. It's like, where is everyone who could oppose us? Where, where are these challenges? But it also introduces the unity of all this, like DJ Michael V's intro um, translated is this is for all my Latinos. We're here together and united. So how are you going to ask where we've been when we ain't never left? So that's exactly what it's all about. It's all about this confidence that's key to Latin culture, but it's it's not confidence necessarily just in oneself. It's not necessarily that boastfulness, but it's about knowing who you are in Christ. You know. Next track is Rompe Bocina featuring Tommy Royale and Social Club Misfits Marty and Fern big like caribbean beat got some energy like i was ready for pitbull to hop on this one like it was really cool feeling and i really loved how the beat switched up like halfway through creativity just is really engaging stuff even though yeah i don't understand the words yeah bro i, I feel like that this joint was more caliente you know what i mean about grab my wife and turn the living room into a dance hall right quick then it switched up in the middle of the song and i almost robbed her yeah, so Rompe Bocina is continuing just this confidence that started off in Watch in Watcher Six or um, Donde Estan. Um, I think there's something really cool about having a social club feature on a Reach Records project. I don't know, that just felt dope to me. Um, and yeah, uh, Marty Fern and uh, Tommy Royale are all Puerto Rican, so the islands particularly represented there. Uh, but it never loses focus on you know standing for that unity. And I love the little. Uh, peek into Marty's family that he presents in his verse where it's like, yo, my aunt was fighting cops in New York. Like that's that you guys don't know how crazy my my family is. I think that was just a really great light touch on the song. Yeah. And you can tell that I live in Staten Island. And instead of being around Puerto Ricans, I'm around Italians because I said Bocina and that's Italian. Bocina. Um, but it's Bocina. OK, so the third the third track is Como Yo and that's featuring Nico Emmy. Yeah, for Como Yo, it, it sounded so I, I tried to cheat and read Rap Genius while it was being translated. And so you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like this is like a heartbreaker kind of song, like a love song. And uh, there's like I really like the instrumental here. There's the plucking strings going and it's still got this poppy backbeat to it. It just sounded nice. It was cool. But uh, 
it was it was a different is a shift in the concept and the theme of what they're talking about um different from the first couple songs i totally felt like antonio banderas listen to this joint you know what i mean like all i needed was like a rose in my mouth and i think i could have pulled it off you know what i mean but this song it sounds like something i would hear in a movie soundtrack like if i was watching like bad boys and i'm picturing mike lowry going through the closet grabbing a 50 about to go down miami to the club you know what i mean or he about to holler at some shorty like this would be the music that would be in the background before he pulled up to buy the drink for old girl you know what i mean that's how i felt about this record right here yeah so word the concept of como yo is exactly what's in the title translated it means like me um and it's kind of exactly what luke said earlier it's about uh basically this concept that uh this girl needs needs someone like me in her life because she's been she's been hurt in uh, past relationships, but um, and it's it's kind of spoiled her. But she needs someone who wants to be with her for marriage and for commitment, not just for her body. So I think you know you can't have a Latin record without at least some romance going on. It's just it's not possible. So I'm glad they did include that for the culture on this project. So the next track is Aya featuring Juan De and Lizzie Pada. All pop flavors to it. Wande sounds really dope with the hushed voice and the pauses in her in her flow. Man, it, she's just really good. I really enjoy listening to her. And then Lizzie Parra, she lights it up. And so with those two juxtapositions of how they came at the beat, it was really cool. It made a complete track for me there. And, yeah, they're kind of yin and yang to each other that way. And I thought it really, was really dope. Yo, I'm going to be all the way honest, and y'all may not like me for this, but this was kind of regular to me, you know what I mean? I only say that because everything else up to this point has been layered so beautifully as far as the instrumentation and the sound structure. This beat was super simple, and sometimes simple is good, but after everything we heard up to here, I was kind of thrown off by this one. It was like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not that I didn't like it. One day came with her extra, uh, extraordinary energy. Delivery on the hook was super dope. The verse was very polished as well. The drums were hitting. It just felt like I was off with a burger after, you know, being at a five-star restaurant and getting, you know, all of the caviar and the wine and everything. And the main course was like a burger. You know what I mean? Yeah, so uh, actually, just for me personally, I'm going to have to disagree with Cut on this one. I love AI, and I don't know why, but I just keep coming back to it. I think more than any other track. I don't know. I, I, I dig it. Um, so Aya basically means uh, her or she, it depends on how you're using it. Um, and it's exactly that, it's for the ladies. It's all about women's empowerment. Um, Lizzie Parra talks about being looked down upon because she's a woman, but how she has already received her, elec her election in the kingdom. And that's the whole vibe of the track. It's about uh, women knowing who they are and feeling empowered, not because of any worldly construct or anything like that, but because they've already been appointed by Christ that way. You know, you've also got Lizzie Fada repping um, her Dominican Creole heritage, which is always, always super important. And Wande comes in with this sort of um, reaffirmation of what the Great Commission is, right? So she said, to rep Christ, you ain't gotta speak English, gotta take it worldwide, I ain't stopping until I see him on the Lord's side, which is exactly what's kind of been the vibe of this whole project is like, uh, the kingdom of God is not limited to an American speaking audience. And I think Wande represents that really well here. And, you know, like I said, I, it's it's something I'm personally really appreciative because, you know, I think in American in America, we tend to be very uh, Euro and English centric. But this sort of appreciation for other cultures is really important. All right. The, the next track is La Fiesta featuring Lecrae and Funky, the legend. This one, it felt like uh, that old Pete Rodriguez song to me. Uh, I like it like that a little bit. Got like a little little Fiesta vibe. Uh, club stuff once again um, this one was kind of fun for me I, I thought I, I was starting to lose some energy here so while cut started losing energy the last time I think uh, I'm starting to lose energy on it here it, it just everything seems a little similar up to this point and so that's where I was at for this I disagree Luke they, they, they hit the speed bump and they came back with it I caramba this record right here Fuego. Mm, 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 mm. I gotta hit the horn, bro. Your joint sounded like a perfect balance of both cultures. I'm all here for this. They crept in slow when it started. I was like, okay, this is a little slow jam. When the beat dropped, it went crazy. Like you can't play this everywhere though, because somebody gonna try to audition for the International Reach Records twerk team. You play this in the wrong spot, you know what I mean? I love the horns that they use. Everything sounded authentic and classic. 
The drums were bananas. Everything about this record from the moment I heard it let me know there was going to be a standout record. Word to Powerline. And I love Powerline. So for, for you know, just a little transparency, y'all, I'm more the lyrics guy, whereas I think these guys have a way better understanding of what's going on music-wise, which I guess works out well because I translate a lot of this stuff ahead of time. Um, so La Fiesta, I think, is really dope uh, in sound, obviously, but I think there's also, it's not lacking in content, right? So Funky's talking about, he comes back to this line, mucha sal, mucha, mucha, mucha sal, which is all about how like we are the salt of the earth. And he comes back to this theme, like Christians, uh, believers, we're, we're the salt of the earth. We're the ones who are cultivating um, for God's glory, right? And uh, Lecrae picks up on that right away, talking about how the Lord's guiding all his steps and he keeps the power of God in him, on him at all times, which is something he's rapped about on Church Clothes 3, on Restoration. Like, that's not something that um, is alien to Lecrae. So, uh, yeah, La Fiesta is just, I think it worked really well also as the, was it the lead single uh, off the project? I think it was one of the first videos released. Um, and that the fact that it kind of introduced the energy of the project that way, uh, weeks ahead of the drop was great. All right, next up is Russo, Russo. Tommy Royale killed this song. Woken up from my slumber at this point. Like, and like you said, like whatever Tommy's saying there, he kills it. And uh, Angie Rose, I always appreciate what she's able to bring. Man, yeah, it's just, it was a dope track. I really like it. Another joint that I see going crazy in the dance halls. I mean, I don't even dance. All I do is this, you know what I'm saying? All I do is this. But this had me thinking of doing a little something extra. You know what I mean? Angie Rose showed out on her verse. The hook was fantastic. And the whole package was put together really nicely. Yeah, man, I, I love Busto. That's the other one that I keep coming back to. Um, I think, so I, I did translate some of those lyrics. Uh, we've got, a, I got a rough translation here. Um, so Busto is essentially about, uh, in part, n neglecting the, the what God is, that God is watching over you, right? That, you know, and it's funny that Luke brings up this idea of the club and, and that sort of lifestyle because it's like you you hear that and it's almost contradictory or paradoxical where it feels like man you're living this sort of lifestyle but the message of the song is like but god is still watching you and you keep ignoring him anyway so rough translation here you think god isn't watching keep abusing keep abusing in heaven you'll uh they'll have to pay keep stumbling over these little things and you'll have to keep falling like that's just the reality of living a simple lifestyle and honestly i do got to give a special shout out to angie rose uh, or Angela Rosa, as Tommy Royale called her. She represented the Bronx and Puerto Rico really well. And she brought up Tim's, which is the most beautiful thing that I could ever hear in a, a New Yorker rapping in Spanish. Thank you, Angie. Appreciate you. Uh, all right, track number seven is Bomba, featuring Practico and Derek Minor. They had that sound bite from the protesters, like leading into the song. It sets up like the content of the song that we're ready for. And then Derek Minor, I love I love anything that he's on typically, and um, I just dig the unity throughout this whole thing. I don't know if we've really talked about that too much, but just hearing all these artists in each other's space is just really cool for me. You know, I thought it was gonna be like La Bamba remix, uh, when what I heard was actually a million times better. I love the cast took the time to address the social injustice issues and everything we've been going through this year. Derek came through and kept it all the way 1,000 as usual, laying it all on the table, addressing how many of us have been feeling ever since Trayvon Martin. Um, even mentioning how we're starting to give some of us PTSD, you know what I mean? Um, I appreciate both artists coming through together on a project like this to still speak on a subject this heavy and showcase unity in the fight for equality for all. Yeah, man. So uh, just for a little context, Bomba, when it's left on its own, translates directly to the bomb. Um, but Bomba is also a Puerto Rican, or it's a, it's a dance from Puerto Rican culture that's primarily attributed to our African ancestors. And you see a lot of Afro-Latinos from the island dancing in, in that style, right? So it's already sort of hinting at what the content is going to be of the song. Practico talks about this idea of being Afro-Latino, and, and he says, this is a rough translation again, because listen, I'm just trying out here. Um, he says, even if they hold me at gunpoint, I'm black and I'm proud. I resist the system that controls me. My roots are Latino. I'm proud of my country between African, Taino, Spanish. My pigment was created, right? So it's this idea of simultaneously being proud of black and uh, Latino roots and standing up for both at the same time, but also um, addressing the reality of these issues like the systemic racism that we know has emerged this year in particular, but not just this year, even before that. 
Um, but what's beautiful about what Practico and Derek Minor did was in both of their verses, it does end off on this note of hope. And I think that's something we all need uh, amid the craziness of 2020. All right, the next track is Voy a Amarte featuring Ivan Rodriguez, not the baseball player, Pudge, and, uh, and Byron Jawan. Uh, so it's a huge pivot from what we've heard now. So this isn't even a rap song. This is just like a pop soul track almost. It's just really laid back vibes. It feels like vacation. Um, the instrumental here is very intricate. I really like the whole, the way it all comes together, all the different layers to it. Being able to hear that, uh, yeah, it's really dope. But it's a total deviation from what we've heard up to this point. Let me tell you something right now. This record sounded like something, <clears throat> sounded like something I played for my wife. <laughs> with the candles lit around the house with roses sprinkled all to the bed. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> this is that grown and sexy right here, you know what I'm saying? Like this joint <laughs> made me feel like standing in the rain singing to the lady outside the window, you know what I mean? I'm like, okay, okay. Both singers did a great job setting the tone. They had great vocal presence. For a minute, Byron turned into Chris Breezy right quick. I was almost about to hire her at Rihanna, you know what I mean? But then he brought it back, you know what I'm saying? And it was, it was all dope. Like if Spanish Fly had a sound, this would be it, you know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm super proud, salute extra for Byron. I mean, I know he was young. He's grown into such an amazing artist. And this record is another example of his growth. You know what I mean? Eli's going to translate and be like, well, cut right. It's actually about the joys of preschool. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> if only. No, no, no. In all seriousness, I, I didn't have a lot to say about Voya Marte. Uh, basically, the translation of the title is I Will Love You. I think. It's just a, a great follow-up to what Byron's been doing this year. Um, with the last project, it was a, uh, I'm Not Crazy. I, that was the one that just dropped. Um, so yeah, just continuing in that romantic vibe, much in the same vein as, uh, what was it? It was, what was the other love song off this thing? It was Como Yo, right? So just more of that sort of focus on romance. Um, yeah, I think it's just really dope, but I don't have much to say about that one. Next song is Como Fue, featuring last year's uh, Rapzilla freshman, Don Revko or one of the freshmen from last year. Como Fue, I didn't really have much to say about this one. It kind of stays in that same vein, that uh, Island Paradise kind of feel and like the soulful vibe to it. Word, word, word. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. I kind of dug it, it was cool. Uh, it didn't stand out as much as all the records for me on first listen. It wasn't bad, it's just that everything else I've heard up to here was phenomenal. And this was just good. Yeah, I, I second what you guys say. I, I mean, Como Fue is just kind of, to me, it kind of just felt like spinning the wheels at this point. I'm like, all right, I, I love this. I love what we've been doing so far. But like now I'm starting to get a little tired. Um, but, you know, it's it's still uh, important for the culture. And I'll never disrespect it that in that sense. But, um, yeah, como fue, I don't have any notes on it, really. All right, the next track is Mejor featuring Antonio Redis. Right, so we're officially in a second slump of the album for me. Like, I'm like, okay, I get it. Like we switched, we switched gears. We're just going to singers now, and uh, yeah, I didn't really have much to say because I was, I was, I, I'm tired at this point. I feel like that this was a, a, it was a dope record. I like the melodies and the hook and the instrumentation used. The little raindrops, xylophone sounded all magical and stuff in the beat too. Oh yeah, you know I mean, Antonio had a good voice. Uh, this sounded like some Spanish chill hop type joint actually, and it was a, it was a solid record overall. Yeah, man. So mejor um, translates to better in English. Um, and for me, it content wise reminded me a lot of uh, What Up RG's Exit 104, because the lyrics are all about this idea of letting go of um, something that was painful for you that abused you in the past and how now there's something better for you. And it could be taken. You could. It's one of those um, records that blends the idea of is it about a, roman a romance? Is it about God? Um, and I think it's always really interesting when artists do that. Uh, that's why it really reminded me of Exit 104, where it's this idea of like the the thing that could have been abusive or evil, what could be sin. And um, he could be talking about how God has provided and, and his love suffices in a way that sin just doesn't. Um, but it could also, if you just uh, want to listen to it at the very surface, it could just be taken as a romantic record. And, and this idea of like, I found someone better than, you know, you used to be for me. So I think it works on both ends. All right. Next up is Celebramos featuring 1K Few and Nico Emmy. Now we're back to hip hop. And so, okay, once again, I'm having to retrain my ears. Okay, yeah, this is what it sounds like. 
and um, I really like the beat on this one. I like I loved how it drops in and out, and it gives room to the artists over it. And so then what the artists were able to bring in certain spots was just way different than what we'd had up at this point. And so it was just really cool to hear the versatility, the creativity when it comes to how to attack a beat like this. These cats ran wild like Hawkamania. Right. Let me tell some brother, they did that. You know what I'm saying? The hook was extra spicy. Everybody went in on the verses and the NZ hooks was super delivery, was dopeness. It was, it was a phenomenal record. Everybody did a great job. I, again, I'll just second these guys. Hulkamania running wild. That's what this record is. It's it's pure hip hop. It's, you know what? You wanted th those vibes too. That's exactly what you're going to get. Final track, Tommy Royale making his third appearance. And what up, RG? Finally making an appearance. Ambiente. Uh, yeah, this one, I loved how the beat moved. Um, it was just, there was a lot of energy here too. Um, it's phenomenal. I love the way this beat goes, the way it's layered and the way it, uh, it just has like momentum through the whole thing. That was really cool. First off, I got to say, welcome back, RG. He came, hopped out the back cave and dropped <laughs> us with some sauce. RG's like a walking bottle of sriracha. Just everything he jump on be saucy. I couldn't even understand it. And it was saucy. You know what I'm saying? Him and Tommy ended this joint out real dope. I think it was a cool way to end the project, almost symbolic, like when Cray had KB on, used to do it too. Like RG has been one of the most recon uh, recognizable Hispanic artists in the genre. And him and Tommy ending up on the song together is saying something. I hope you're listening. Yeah, man. So I listen. I think anyone who who knows anything just like knows how much I love What Up RG, right? So Ambiente is just a great final note for Sin Vergüenza, and I think it's so dope to see um, Tommy Royale and What Up RG on a record together. They're like the two guys most well known in our space for representing the Hispanic Latino culture. And there's even a slight allusion to that in RG's lyrics, where he's talking about like the chemistry between them is like indescribable. It's just natural. It's just there, right? Um, in terms of themes, uh, there's this idea that. Uh, ambiente is summarizing everything that Sinvergüenza was all about. It's, all, it's for El Bajio, which is the hood. It's for La Iglesia, the church. And it's all about providing the vibes. And that's what Sinvergüenza is and has been as a whole. So just great final note to leave the project off on. And um, yeah, I'm really excited to see what we've got uh, coming down the pipeline next. And that's it. We have run through Sinvergüenza, the project. That is the pen. Now it is time to welcome Kardec on to play the game and do the 101. So, all right, everyone get ready for the Kardec fade. Fade into Kardec. So we are welcoming Kardec drums to the Pen Game 101. And he is gonna help us break down Sin Vergüenza, the 116 Reach Records Latin project explosion of sound that has everybody and their mother on it that makes Latin music in CHH and beyond. So we're super excited. Kardak, what up, man? We're gonna run through some games. We're gonna we're gonna test your knowledge. We're gonna talk about this project. So how you feeling right now? I'm good, man. Good. Great to be here. It's uh I'm glad the album was finally out. So to see people like excited about it is, is super, super dope. Yes, yes, dope. All right, so we are going to start right away and we're going to throw you to the wolves with our first game actually we have a new name because you're the first producer on here name that beat and now cut right you are going to take over from here on out Oh, well, you said the wolves, you know what I'm saying? So I had to be wolfy right quick. Yo, call that, bro. I know you're a super producer. I see you got that Clark Kent super curl up there, bro, right now. You know what I'm saying? That's why you're a super producer. So you should recognize, you know what I mean, the skills and talents of other super producers. Now, this is a part where I get to re reveal my world-class beatboxing skills. So you know, you got the name that beat. All right? Oh, beat number one. <laughs> 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 That's Timbo. You got to see what song, bro. That's, oh, that's, uh, that's Aaliyah. Know somebody. I okay, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. All uh, right, so number two. Yo, the audio cut out. I can't hear you. Oh, snap. <laughs> the audio cut out. Is anybody hearing them? <laughs> Yo, your audio keeps cutting out. Yo. 
<laughs> it's gone. Yo, it's gone. You go away. <laughs> every every time you start beatboxing, the audio goes away. Wait, oh wait, hold on, let me step back. <laughs> Are you talking uh, I think I think you're doing uh Neptune's uh, uh grinding. Ah, right, yeah, there we go, sir. There we go. Thank all right, all right, we got one more. We got nine. Right, hold, hold up, hold up. How oh. doesn't your microphone like you beatboxing? All right, right. So listen, so the next, the next legendary beat we doing. Yeah, you know I mean, let's go. What? What? Yeah, bro. All right, word, 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 word. Okay, okay, okay. Was that Soldier Boy? What? Oh, <laughs> You see, bro, I almost pulled your card. Just all right, okay, okay. You got three points. Let's see if you get a perfect score. Let's go to this one. Are you talking about uh Justin Timberlake? Cry me a river. Yep. Cry me a river. That's right, sir. Ding ding ding, bro. You the champ, sir. I see you. I see you, bro. You you did bro, the thing. I'm crying right now just from <laughs> <laughs> watching you do that. Yo, that was amazing. <laughs> oh my god. I was like, what? <laughs> Yo, you know what I'm saying? This is like, man, maybe maybe I won't give you a beat, but maybe you could beatbox on a beat for him. Hey, he might be like, bro, you might need a, a breath mint over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that was that was very entertaining. So that was that was good. Good job. Good job, Kardec. Um, all right, now we're going to hit you with the trivia game. We're going all Latin America. So okay. let's see what you know about your geography, what you know about your facts. Luke, Oof. hit them. Right. If you can't pronounce it, Luke, we'll, we'll, we'll get in there for you. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to try my best. All right. All right. Uh, question one, name four of the eight countries in Central America. Uh, okay. Um... Nicaragua, Guatemala, Honduras, uh, Paraguay? No? No. No? Uh, man. That's all I got, bro. That's all I got. <laughs> I barely graduated high school, bro. This is going to be a train wreck. <laughs> That's great. That was more than I could have named. Uh, you got Costa Rica. You got El Salvador. You got Mexico. Yep. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, what is the largest in size Spanish speaking country in South America? I want to say, well, Brazil doesn't count because they don't speak Spanish, they speak Portuguese. I either it either has to be Colombia or Venezuela. Um, no, it's Argentina. Argentina. That was hey, I'm learning three. stuff here too. It's it's that good. was gonna be the third one too. It was like it's, it has to be one of those threes. Um all right, number three. What is the English nickname for Puerto Rico? English nickname for Puerto Rico? Yeah. Uh, there's always been a joke for it. They spell it like P-O-R-T-O, oh. Puerto Rico. But I, that's a new one. I've never heard. <laughs> I've never heard the English nickname for Puerto Rico. That's a new one. What's that? Uh, it says Island of Enchantment. Oh, that, that's a translation, bro. That's not necessarily a... Oh, oh okay. Google trip, uh, I don't know, but all right. <laughs> number four, what are the three largest Hispanic groups represented in the U.S.? Um, I'm going to say Mexican for sure. Yeah. Um, Dominican and Puerto Rican? Uh, no, it says Cuban. Cuban, Cuban. Puerto Rican, Mexican, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I feel that. Yeah. All right, number five. What state has the largest Latin community? Oof. What state? Yeah. It has to be either Texas, uh, uh, California, or New York. Right. I'm going to do a. What happened? 
You go got, ahead, pick, you got, pick one. You said New York. You're good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just, be, I'm gonna be nice to him, guys. <laughs> I'm like, yo, this is a trade wreck. Yeah, this is tough. This, these are tough, man. I would hate to be these people having to answer these questions, man. All right, last question: What Caribbean nations trace their roots back to Taino? Oh, well, I'm gonna say Puerto Rico, but it's all it's Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, and Cuba for sure. Yeah, there you go. There's three of them. There's two more. Do you, can you guess? I want to say probably Haiti because it's on the same island. Yep, yep. And what's close to there? I don't know what I don't know what other island would this, be close. This one was a surprise for me. It's actually Jamaica. Oh yeah. But I mean, it makes sense because they're all yeah. they're all within proximity. Boop, hey, did boop, I say boop, it right? Boop. Did I say Taino? It right? Taino's good. Yeah, Taino. Boom. Boom. Solid job, Luke. There we go. All right. Carter, you went you went extra when you were when you were pronouncing the Central American names. I was like, oh man, he's really he's really dialed <laughs> well, in right he's now. He's really about his life. Honduras, <laughs> Nicaragua. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got our third game, and this is the run it back game, and Eli is going to take this one. Yes, sir. So, Kardec, we usually, when we've done this game with KB and Holvey and all these guys, you know, we usually bring it back to test their pen. And we're going to do that with you, even though we know you're a producer. So we're going to have you look, look back at a song that you produce, and we're going to see if you can complete one of these, this artist's verse. All right, I'm going to give you the first few lyrics of this, of this song. You try to finish the verse and tell me what song it is and who, who made it. Mm -hmm. All right. Nothing ever works for me. And I know it always could be worse for me. Earth's curse and its work hurts irking me. But when it all be imagined, like mercy me. That sounds like a KB bar. I don't know what song it is, but it's definitely KB for sure. Okay, cool. So it's uh, it's crazy from KB's 100. Yeah, there we go. I don't know. The, the games went interesting today for sure. But uh, <laughs> let let's hit you with the interview questions. Now we're gonna we're gonna hit the 101 take us to school obviously the 101 like a pen game yeah. so uh we're gonna we're gonna run through some questions about the project and about yourself and uh and then that's it then you are free to go back to making beats in 10 minutes for whoever <laughs> needs it and they don't have to be for cut right either where did the idea of the name scene vergüenza come from and how did you know is a perfect title man to be honest Stephen, once i came when we were <clears throat> had uh, our team meeting with the, with the reach marketing team and we were just doing the brand briefing um and uh i don't know who came up with it but it was seen with Wensa, um and i was like yo that's the one but they're like nah it's it's gonna sound kind of lazy because it's technically in a shame in spanish but i was like yo that was it. And we literally like thought about it for like a week and a half, almost two weeks. Um, and we, we were trying to think of other names and we're like, nah, see if that's, that's the one for sure. So it was, it was definitely like a, like a group effort. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So you talked about the idea of like meeting with the reach marketing team. So, uh, the earliest allusions we saw to Sinvergüenza from reach were back in August. I and mean, I think we saw Tommy Royale, talk about it or at least make an allusion to it on Twitter back then too. So at that point in time, how uh, deep into production was Sin Vergüenza and how long before that had conversations around the project started? Yeah, if it was August, it was the album was already done. We started working in February, um, like early, yeah, it was like mid February. Yeah, cause, cause the literally the week before I was in Tampa working on KB's album and then yeah, it was like a couple weeks, took a couple weeks off and then came to, um, went to Atlanta to work on, on Save by Winsa. Um, and um, yeah, man, it was that whole process of getting to that. It was like a, maybe like a, almost like a three-year conversation with Ace. It started when I was working on Tadashi's album, his last album, the, uh, what was Never it? Fold? Never full, never full. Yeah. yeah, we're working on that. And uh, yeah, man, me and Ace, we just went out to lunch and we we're just talking about it. And he was like, man, like how important is the the Latino market right now? And I'm like, bro, like, and I just put him on game. Like, I was like, yo, you see these dudes? Like they're completely independent. 
they're destroying Lecrae's numbers, like, like through the, you know what I'm saying? At least, and this is what it is on YouTube, like, they're killing it, you know? And so he was like, yo, so like, what do you think? You think it could be a project? And, you know, it, and it was literally like a whole like three year process. Um, the conversation happened like four times. Uh, we turned them down, like we turned Breach down like four times. Just, just we wanted to make it right. At first I was like, I don't want to do it. I don't know if I should do it. You know, I don't know if, and then it was just getting like the business right. Um, to like in January, we finally um, came to like a, a agreement where both parties won or, you know, they were good. And um, yeah, man, we started working, signed the, the papers in February. Then the same week just started working. I think we came up with like 12, 13 demos in one week. I brought my team. It was uh, me, <clears throat> Tommy Royale, Nico Emmett, who's also a producer and an amazing writer, but also an artist, um, and Antonio Redes from Puerto Rico. Um, and uh, he's also part of the uh, No Apologies roster. And um, yeah, man, we just went to work, knocked, knocked out all these demos in a week. And when we showed Lecrae, he was like, when we showed the whole team, everyone was like, yo, this is crazy. So um yeah man it was it was dope uh, from, since day one we knew that it was gonna be something special for sure word, word. well bro you are exactly right yeah you know i mean that project was crazy bro you know what i mean and with this project you blended so many different parts of the culture uh, from reggaeton the trap the hip-hop the salsa uh you even uh, did a phenomenal job throughout the whole thing what does this project mean for you as someone who played such a huge part in the growth of our space behind the scenes to be able to drop a record that's this impactful and culturally unifying for me man i wanted there was there was a few things that i wanted to show like i wanted to put my stamp in the culture and say like yo like this is this is cardi like this is what i do this is what i can do this is what i'm capable of um and then on the on because on the spanish side last year that was kind of like my coming out party in the Latino scene, like as far as like producing for like all the big Latino artists. Um, and there was just some controversy of like, you know, people using splice loops and, you know, we, there was another producer, we ended up using the same loop and, you know, there was rumors that I was like, I stole his beat and, you know, all this stuff. Um, and, you know, all that stuff is cleared up now, but I, I, I wanted to, show everyone that I was like, look, I'm original and this is what I do. And this is, you know, this is what I can do. So that was, that was like one aspect of it. But then the, the other aspect, which is the big picture was <clears throat> like, there's so much separation and there's so much like, not, not just, not just in the both world, the both worlds are completely separated, but just in sometimes like in both cultures, like there's people I don't want to work with him because he don't got numbers. I don't want to work with him. I don't like him. I just don't like him. And so I was like, yo, can we just, let's just stop and let's just make dope music together. You know what I'm saying? Um, and it was really just bridging both worlds. And so like, so people can, can come together. And so like someone that raps in English can do a song with Tommy and it won't be the Spanish song of the album. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, this is gonna be the Spanish song. You know, now it's kind of like, and it's crazy, it's only been a, like a year and some months where it's not weird to hear Tommy on a song anymore. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like, Tommy gets on, it's like, oh, he killed it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't understand what he said, but it was fire. You know what I'm saying? So, and I think, you know, um, having, you know, being on, you know, Tommy being on Gabby's project, on KB's project, on, on Marty for President and all that helped a lot. But then also us just dropping content, like just tons of content last year helped as well. And so we just want to bridge the gap where it's just like, there ha doesn't have to be the, this is going to be our Spanish song. So let's make it Spanish sounding. It's like, nah, he could rap. He's just going to be in Spanish. You know what I'm saying? And so that, I think that was the biggest thing is like, we're all one, you know what I'm saying? We're all one body, whatever language it is. There, there's not much differences in how we live life, do music or whatever. Like, we just, we just gonna rap and we're gonna make dope music, no matter the language. Sinvic Granza does a great job of bringing cultures together 
But from the production side of things, was there any difficulty in assembling a soundscape that complements both rap and Latin artist, artists on the project? Or did the similar roots in those genres make the process easier for you? Yeah, man. Some some songs came easy. Um, some were like, some, some of the songs were just like a, how do I do this? You know, um, yeah. <clears throat> like Don't Estan Mucha Six, that was easy. That was that was the first beat I made for the project, and that was the first song we wrote for the project. Um, Aya, that was like a 15 minute beat, but it was like all of us was vibing, you know what I'm saying? Um uh what else? There, there was a couple songs that were like, Yeah, this is this is a go, you know what I'm saying? We're doing this. And then there was other songs like La Fiesta with Funky and Lecrae. That one, that was like a three-month process of like finding the right beat, how do we do this? How are we gonna make this work? Um, there was the the bachata record, the Boyamante with Byron Jawan and, and Ivan Rodriguez. That one was like different for me because I had to like find musicians to to play all the stuff. Um, because bachata is all like live instrumentation. Um, and then trying to incorporate, you know, hip hop elements. So like that's where you get like the Timberland-esque vocal chops and you know like there was like a Travis Scott ish intro type thing but then it goes into like just traditional bachata so there's it was a mix there's some tracks came super easy and then some that are like we really had to like put a lot of time and effort and thinking of it um but I, I I really wanted to make the statement of like yo if we're gonna do this there's gonna be no skips there's like every record is there for a reason you know what I'm saying um, and like, I wanted, like th when we first did the deal, like with reach, it was, it was only supposed to be like an EP, like eight songs. Um, and then, so when I delivered 12, I told them, I was like, yo, it's 12, but I guarantee you, you're not going to be able to cut any of them. And they did it. They just went with all, with all 12 songs. Um, and so for me, it made me feel good that I was like, yo, there's no, there's no weak song on here. Yeah, man. So you mentioned, uh, by name, Byron Huayne, uh, Lecrae. You've got Juan Dan Aya, and those guys are all three of those artists aren't traditionally known for being fluent in Spanish. So I got to ask, was there any hazing of the non-Spanish speakers for making attempts uh, in the process of making the album? Nah, man, because <clears throat> nah, I mean, because the thing is, we didn't ask them to speak Spanish. We were just like, yo, just do what you do. Um, and they just did it. And the thing is, man, like the like the, the Latino cultures, like they love that. You know what I'm saying? Like the fact, like, yo, every time, you, I mean, you can go on YouTube and see reaction videos or every time I play to somebody, or even when I showed it to my boys that were Latino, they're like, yo, you got to look great rapping in Spanish. What is, you know what I'm saying? Like they, they were going crazy, even though, you know, the pronunciation might've been bad or whatever, like for the culture, for the Latino culture, it means so much to them. The fact that like, yo, the fact that they're trying and they're embracing us, like we feel accepted. We feel, yo, like Lecrae acknowledges us. Like Lecrae is one of us now, you know what I'm saying? Um, and some people, some people had issues with it. Some people were like, yo, the Tadashi's verse and Watch a Six with in Spanish was whack. His pronunciation was whack. And I'm like, you completely missed the whole point. You know what I'm saying? Um, but like for as far as the culture is concerned, like they loved it because it's a thing of like, yo, we feel accepted, we feel honored, we feel seen. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to to give like, a, you know, I wanted to give this for the, 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 the Latino community. It was a gift because when I was, um, by the way, I'm also a drummer and I used to tour <clears throat> with, uh, with Andy, with Andy Minio. I was his drummer, and then uh, after a while, I became his music director for a little bit. Um, but I remember every time, like, first of all, all his biggest cities were all Latino. Like, the biggest cities were all, like, Latino cities, right? And so <clears throat> the biggest moment of the night, you would think would be the end when he does You Can't Stop Me. It was Uno Uno Seis. You know what I'm saying? And, ev like, every night, like, it was the loudest point of the show so that's why I'm like hmm there's something here you know and so that's that's what I told them I was like yo y'all biggest audience if not it's like a very big part of your audience is Latino you guys don't do anything to um to like for them you know what I'm saying 
to acknowledge them. And, it, and not just REACH, but CHH in general. You know what I'm saying? The biggest CHH markets is Miami, LA, Orlando, Houston, New York, Chicago. It's filled with Latinos, right? Um, and so I'm like, yo, like, we got to do something for them. You know what I'm saying? Um, and um, I'm happy it came out the way we wanted to. Everyone, like, even with the documentary, like, I had people DMing me, hit me up, like, yo, like, this is us. Like, we, I felt acknowledged. I felt represented. And so that's 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 exactly what we wanted to do. You mentioned it earlier on, the splice issues, you know what I'm saying, um, that because of you being, you know, a producer, I'm saying, um, I know like McCray ran into the same issue as well, um, that what advice could you give upcoming producers when it comes to handling uh, sampling or using services like Splice? Um, you know what I'm saying? Because so, so many producers now run to that because it's so easy uh, to create. You don't got to dig through the crates no more. You don't got to, you know what I'm saying? So what, what advice would you give uh, young producers as far as creativity goes and sampling? I think for me, like sampling is part of hip hop, you know, so I don't, I don't, I don't see it as like, oh, it's an easy thing because even in Splice, you still got to dig, you know what I'm saying? You probably not digging through records, but you like, it's not like it's, it might be a little easier to find something that's like, yo, that's fire. But at the same time, like there's days where you're like, you got to dig, like, because there is a lot of like stuff that's just crap on Splice. Um, but I will say if you're going to use samples, make sure they're royalty free, um, 100% royalty free, because I know a, a lot of people, what they're doing now, a lot of producers will make their own samples and they're dope, but then they come back and they're like, yo, you won't give me half of that publishing, right? <laughs> and I'm like, what you mean? I pay, I pay for the sample already. Yeah, nah, but I need that back. And it's like, bro, you know what I'm saying? So you mean, you mean to tell me I gotta, I gotta pay you publishing? for a sample pack that you sold to thousands of people that already have the sample when I paid, I paid you already. So that's, I'm not down with that. And I, I get, I get the hustle. I get the business out of it, but even like I have sample packs and I don't even do that just cause bro, like you getting your money. Like you got hundreds of people, thousands of people buying it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I will say like sampling, sampling is, is, is part of hip hop. So like I'm, I'm for sampling. Um, but be creative with it. Don't just get the whole loop and just loop it, you know, chop it up. Um, and there's so many things now you can do with, with software. It's like, you can change the individual notes of the sample. You know, if you wanted to, you can do so many, you can reverse it. You can pitch it up, pitch it down. Um, I would say don't stop sampling, but get creative with it, you know? Um, and I think those have always been the, some of my my biggest records is when I just get creative with it, you know what I'm saying. Or if I I do make my own sample, I'm you know my own melodies, I make it sound like a sample, and then I flip that. You know, I think the biggest thing is get creative. If you're gonna sample, change it up, change the the tempo, change the key, make it different, so people won't call you out as like, yo, that's my loop. This is what I do. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. But as far as like sampling, like I'm all for it. That's hip hop. Like I, almost all of my beats have some type of sample in them, um, because that's that's just the essence of hip hop. You know what I'm saying? That's what I grew up. Like my favorite producer is Kanye. You know what I'm saying? And so like that influenced me heavy. Um, so I'm always sampling in whatever beat it is. It might not be record samples, but as far as like splice loops and, and there's other there's other tools out there. Um, but I, I just say like, just get creative with the samples. All right. So let me ask you off top. Do you know how many different Hispanic nationalities are represented on this project? Yeah, right now, here's the thing. So there, the, I wanted to do more, but the thing is in the, in the, the Latin and the, the Christian reggaeton and trap scene, the people who are really mostly doing it who are like active are either Puerto Rican or Dominican. Um, there's some people maybe like in Colombia and some in others, but as far as like the bigger names, they're either Dominican and Puerto Rican. So a lot of the people were Puerto Rican, Dominican. Um, we had Mexico because of RG. 
Don Grifco, who's part of the um, No Apologies roster. He's from Honduras. Um, who else? Who else? Yeah, I was pretty. Yeah, was, that was pretty much. It was pretty much Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, Honduras, Mexico. Um, yeah, as as far as the artists, that was that was pretty much it. Which oh, I want. I, okay. I really want to do more, but you know. I, I just thought of this, and I don't know, it just came to me. Was was um was there any reason why Gavi wasn't a part of the project in some way? To we're good. There's no beef with me with Gavi, but I texted him, and then he he just didn't respond. Um, and then after when we finished the project, he told me he's like, "Yo, I just I was going through some things or whatever." Um, so yeah, and then it turns, and then this is also not me trying to start rumors or whatever but he also while out while we we're working on the project he also announced that he was working on another latin project as well so we were like oh okay you know so it was just like a timing thing like a miscommunication thing um so that didn't happen um i wanted to and he wanted and he wanted it to happen but yeah man so as a as a follow-up to what you mentioned about the idea of pulling in christian artists from the latin culture so you got christian negaton you got christian latin trap which is like a lot of hyphens to try to say in one in one <laughs> phrase um so you got a lot of these artists who we would think of like as outside traditional christian hip-hop um so what were the conversations like pitching the project to those guys and was there any degree of hesitation on either side of the spectrum when it came to making this thing yeah i think there was definitely a hesitation I think it was just a fact of like, is it really gonna happen? Like, is this dude for real? Like, you know what I'm saying? Even with Funky, I was like, you know, yo, Lecrae wants to do a record and da da da. And they're like, and he was like, okay, sure. You know, it was one of them, like, I was like, yo. So, I mean, I think everyone had it, um, had had those little doubts, but that's why. I'm grateful for the people who were who are on this project because the people who were on the project were the ones that are like, yo, say less, I got you. Give me a week, you know, give me a couple of days without hesitation. There was no, well, I'll do this if Lecrae does this. And, da, 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 da. and then, you know, there's a lot of people that came up to me and was like, yo, why isn't this person on? Why isn't this person? Da, da, da. I was like, well, because half of those people wanted a song with Lecrae and we can't have five Lecrae songs with six Spanish artists. Like, it's not a Lecrae Spanish album. It's, it's you know what I'm saying? Um, so, you know, and then the thing is, too, it was the first project. This is the first time that's ever been done. So, like, I, I already knew. I was like, I can't expect to get everyone on this because they don't know what it's going to do, what it's going to be. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, why would they spend their time on something? You know what I'm saying? So, like, I, I totally understood um, but I'm, I'm grateful for the team that, that they came on and, and for the artists that came on because there was no issue of ego. Well, there was one, but, <laughs> um, that's, that's actually how Tadashi got on Donde Um, it was literally, we we're literally the day before we pushed the album back two weeks because we had to, we were, for, we, were we wanted to take our time on the on the documentary. So we decided to push it back two weeks. Literally the very next day, this artist, I'm not gonna name names because I'm not trying to, he's, my, he's still the homie, you know what I'm saying? I'm not mad, he's still the homie. Um, but he was like, yo, I don't wanna be on the song anymore because you showed me the demo and I had these people on it and now they're not on it. You got these people that I don't even know, they're kind of no names and was really not gonna do anything for my career, yada, yada. And I was like, yo. And so, <laughs> and the, I mean, and it was crazy because the project was was uploaded already to distro, contracts were signed, everything was ready to go. And he was like, nah, I don't wanna be our part of it. And so, you know, everyone was freaking out. And then I hit up Tadashi and I was like, yo. And he came through, man, he came, he went crazy, um, gave me the most fire 16 ever. Um, and he, and he like, and this, this was, he was on his way out to a flight. Like he had to leave the next day. So like my man did the verse, killed it, 
then did an interview for the documentary and then hopped on a flight. So I was like, yo, like Tadashi is a freaking, yo, he, 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 he was a go for that, bro. So, um, but yeah, the album I'm excited with, every, with all the, with everyone that was on it. Um, and I couldn't ask for less, bro. Uh, yeah. Tell me what it's like to be, uh, the guy with a large hand and crafting two of the biggest projects of the year with his glory alone. And now this one. You know what? It, it, the crazy thing is, like, we never go in to be like, yo, this is going to be, you know, game changing. But it happened. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, but I, I, think, I think that's what's so great about it. You know, like, I think that's what's so great about it. It's like, we're just making music. We're just having fun and trying to be creative. You know, like, even I think the cool thing, even about last night, like, Social Club won album of the year at the Doves, like, Bro, I didn't even, I totally forgot about the dust. I was watching Mandalorian with, with my family. Like we was, we was chilling. Like we were on Disney plus chilling. And my, and what's funny is my son was with my mom in her room. Cause she was working. He was just watching, he was watching a movie on my phone. And my mom was like, Jay, you got a phone call. And I was like, from who? She was like, Marty, mom. And I was like, Marty, why Marty? <gasps> the Doves. And I like, I, I like, I called him. I was like, yo, what's what happened? He's like, yo, we just won. I was like, what? I was walling out. Um, but even then, that was, it was literally like, we was just making music with the homies. You know what I'm saying? Like that, at that point, when we, when we were working on Mood, it was, yo, we need to bring Social and Kardec back. Like we need to go back to the Summer of George days. You know, like that was the whole thing. And so I think that's the see. I, I don't know. For me, it's like that's the secret sauce. Where it's like, make make music with your friends, and make sure that they don't like when you're in the process. There's no judgment because when we're making music, there's no judgment. You know what I'm saying? It's like if something works, then works. If if it's not, then you know what I'm saying. Like, I think that's the biggest thing um, is having fun and being in a circle and having an environment where there's no judgment in creating because who knows you know what i'm saying like you could pull in a sample and then they'll be like oh that sounds like crap but then i have another idea but if you got other people who are like nah it's not gonna work that's whack that's whack that's whack you know what i'm saying you're not gonna you're not gonna take that effort you're not gonna take that extra step to like well let me see what i can turn this into you know and so um yeah, man, it's it's dope. It's cool that um, I've been able to be part of like some of the, like the biggest songs. Um, but creating, I don't go into like this is gonna be the one, or you know what I'm saying. Like I want to make sure I'm excited about the music first, and then I send it out. You know? Yeah, yeah. You done did so much phenomenality. That's not gonna be a word now. Phenomenality. You know what I'm saying with with all these projects, right? Uh, when it comes to a sequel for this one, who are the names that's at the top of the list that weren't on this project? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. There, there is. We definitely do want to want to do a sequel. I don't know how soon it will be because I don't. I also don't want to. I don't want to do a, a, like a yearly thing where like it just gets old and it's not special anymore. Cause I feel like this is special. So it should stay special every time we do one, it should be special. So I can't tell you when it's going to happen. Um, but I think now for sure, now that like the door is cracked wide open, the biggest names of both worlds, you know, um, I really wanted to get Andy on this project. Um, really wanted to get Andy on it. Didn't happen. Um, I wanted to get almighty. Who's a huge name in, in, uh, the Spanish scene. Um, the homie Redemido, he couldn't be on this project just because he was working on his album. So I was literally working on his album and this one at the same time that was going on. Um, and yeah, there's there's tons of names, Alex Sullo, like we could, you know, we could go on and on. I feel like now, now it's going to be dope because now it's like people seen what this is doing. They know what's going on. And I feel like it's going to be even easier to like just connect both worlds. And the thing is too, is like, I don't want it only to be me. You know what I'm saying? I want, I want def, I want other people to say, all right, bet I'm going to do my version. I want Dayton to be like, yo, you know what? My wife is a dope Spanish rapper. 
She's going to connect all her people. I'm going to connect all my people. And we're going to do just straight bars. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the type of music that I'm not really like. I'm not into. I didn't grow up in New York. I'm, I grew up in South Florida. I'm ratchet. You know what I'm saying? I grew up listening to Lil Jon, Ludacris, Outkast, Pitbull. When Pitbull was talking about killing people. I was, I was, you know what I'm saying? I was talking, I was, I'm a Southern boy, you know what I'm saying? With Caribbean roots. So like, I can't give you the Dilla beats. I can't give you the, you know, the pro beats. I can't, I can't give you that. But Dayton, Dayton can give you that. You know what I'm saying? Dayton, and Dayton has a phenomenal ear when it comes to creating and producing and executive producing a and So it's like, and he's got people, he's got, Latin artists that are like spitters. So it's like, yo, we need that in our scene that I, I can't give you. So it's like, I want to see Dayton do it. I want to see, you know, T. Walla, who has Latin roots, do something with him. I want to see other people do to where it's like, oh, this is like a thing. And it's like, it's not a, it's not a one-off thing anymore. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's been the, that was like the vision where it was like, hopefully inspire people to be like, yo, all right, but I'm going to take this in my lane and I'm going to flip it and we're going to do our version. And then, cause to me, that's real unity. That's real. Like, I don't want to be the, the one-off guy. That's like, Oh, we only do this. And this is our thing. It's like, no, nah, like here's the blueprint. This is how we did it. Here's the, you know, go for it. Well, I'm going to let you know right now. I just purchased a Rosetta stone on Amazon so if you're looking for a feature, I'm right here, bro. I'm just letting you know. It's in the mail two days. So just give me give me a, a week and a half, bro. I'm good. Hey, man, let's get it. I'm down. <laughs> I'm down, bro. Here is your final question of Pen Game 101. And I think it's a pretty appropriate question. So many people don't really know that the, the Latinos were right there with Black people when hip-hop was forming in the 80s in New York City, uh, or in the 70s, actually. Yeah. So, you know, with that not being at the forefront, though, I feel like in CHH specifically, Latinos really have a, a big voice, and they're killing it. And now this helps propel it even further. Do you have any theories into why, uh, like, Latinos do better in CHH or, you know, are more relevant than they are in mainstream? Um, well, I think first um the latino culture is very conservative very conservative so like when when christian hip-hop was a thing became a thing a lot of latino christians started rapping you know what i'm saying like oh i could rap for the lord so i feel like that's <laughs> that's the that's what you can you know i feel like that's just and um i also want to give you all a little history of the spanish side I think in the mid eighties, um, Vico C, which I don't know if you guys know who he is, but Vico C, he's pretty much the the father of Spanish hip hop, Spanish urban music, reggaeton. Like if it wasn't for Vico C, there would no be there would not be any like genre, Latin urban genre or trap music that like Vico C started that. Vico C was the first one um, to like make it really big um, rapping in Spanish. Before that, no one was doing it. So, um, and then fast forward a few years, he, and he became a Christian um, in the mid nineties, mid to late nineties. So from there, he pretty much started Latin Christian hip hop. Um, and he has like one of the biggest albums it's called Aquí Cabe a Muerto. And that album is, not only like the blueprint for Christian hip hop, but it's also a staple in the mainstream. You know what I'm saying? Like everyone who started, they're like, yeah, okay, come in that's, 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 that's in my top 10. You know what I'm saying? Like that's number one. Um, so I feel like that is, that has always been like going back to the, to the question is like, that's always been there. It's always been an influence. And I feel like people like Vico C had an influence on that. Um, but I think the real reason is because we're just so conservative um, and hip hop. I feel like hip hop, Puerto Ricans, Puerto Ricans going to New York, like every every Puerto Rican has family in New York. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like it's, it was just made. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just 
we gravitate towards hip hop. Like we love it. Yeah, man, I feel that a hundred percent. Um, so that's it, man. If, if you have any final thoughts or things you want to say about the project that, you know, we didn't ask you about or that nobody knows about now is the time. Um, nah, man, uh, no apologies for life. No apologies to the death. Um, we're going to take over 2021, get ready. We're going to be announcing all the new artists that we have lined up. We're going to be, uh, releasing music nonstop. Um, Tommy has an EP coming out top of the year. That's going to be fire. Um, on top of just started releasing uh, music with the other artists and, um, yeah, man, no apologies. That's what it is. It, it was dope to hear about the project, especially since, you know, all four of us really didn't know what was happening most of the time on the project, <laughs> <laughs> unless it was like Derek or Byron or, you know, Lecrae, but like you said, but the beauty of uh, people, you know, attempting to speak Spanish and in Latino culture and just being around family and everyone, it's right. always, it's always family. It's always welcome. Everybody, grandmothers dishing out plates to whoever's walking in, you know, and so much of the culture is just the feel, right? And that sound. So it doesn't matter about the language barrier. It just matters that you're there and in the moment, the emotion, the feel, and the family. So that's... So that's what is portrayed on that project with all the different languages, nationalities, and sounds that are involved, which is why people who don't understand what's happening can be like, wow, this is amazing because I feel something. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's all I got. You, all right, none, thanks, of it, exactly I got none of it, bro. But I was like, this is fire. This is fuego, bro. Right here, bro. I, like, I, I can't eat it. It's like I'm putting jalapenos in my ears, bro. It was Yo, phenomenal. You know what I'm saying? Man, uh, I don't know if you know him. He, he uh, goes by Suede. He hit me oh, up. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's he's my like my best. That's my my boy. He's my best friend. He hit me up. He's like, "Yo, this Sophia Vergara album is fire." Like, <laughs> like yo, stop. <laughs> you see, I look. I ain't trying to pronounce it not once, bro. I wasn't even gonna do no disservice to you. I was like, "This project is beautiful. I love it." What I heard, bro. You know what I'm saying I ran it back a couple times. I understand none of the language, but I felt every bit of it, bro. It's phenomenal, bro. Yeah, you know it's, dope. it's super dope, my guy. Appreciate it, bro. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So that was Kardak, and he was talking about Sin Vergüenza, and it was super dope. It was great to hear about the project that, let's be honest, a lot of you watching this right now have no idea of anything that was being said on the project, including us. So it was it was dope to kind of hear the heart behind the project and, and like know about the feel and the emotion and everything that was going on. So Kardak, thank you so much for joining us uh, and for putting this together and working with all these people to make such a fantastic project. Guys, let me kick it to you. We'll, we'll start it with Luke for some final thoughts. Yeah, I just really like uh, how candid he was talking about um, getting this album up off the ground and the collaboration that it took for all of it. It was just really cool to hear all these behind the scenes things, as always. That's really cool. Yeah, man, I think... Uh... It was just so beautiful getting to talk to Kardec. And I think the power of seeing Vergüenza is like, even for me who understood about 30% of what this was, of what all this was, man, um, I felt seen and I felt represented. And I don't, I don't think that's something I've ever felt uh, within CHH as like a Puerto Rican kid from Brooklyn. But um, it, I, it was just amazing to, to connect in a way that's entirely different than I ever have with both uh, my love for CHH and for my own culture. So it was just beautiful to feel that love from all these guys. It is. The journey was dope. I ain't really nothing else I could say. You know what I'm saying? It it was what it was. It was dope. You know what I mean? I couldn't understand a lot of it. I couldn't even understand the English parts like that. You know what I'm saying? The Craig came on. I ain't know. I ain't know what was going on. You know what I'm saying? But everything. Nah. Everybody did a phenomenal job. Um, all of the artists represented themselves. I love. Um, not only you know I'm saying that that it was it was relative to all of the cultures that were represented. But it also spoke to the current times that we're in too. You know what I mean, it was really dope. I appreciate it. I respect it. Uh, salute out. You know what I mean, the Reach Records, the Cardec, the all y'all. You know what I mean, out there in TV land. You know what I mean, I love you guys. It was a seeing single viral. I said it. I tried. Seeing 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 Guag's I ain't gonna do it no more. Sophia Vergara. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Well, that's the pain game 101. Cut right gave it his best shot at the end. It's all good. Again, special thanks to Kardec. Check out Sin Vergüenza and stay tuned for the next episode of Pen Game 101. I don't know who it's going to be yet, but we're going to have a good time. We're going to play games. We're going to go to school and we're going to learn something. So if you're keeping score, remember that's four episodes right now. We got KB, we got D1 and Merce, we got Hovey, then we got Kardak. So who will be number five? I don't know. Drop some comments. Let us know who you think we should get next or any ideas for some games. Let us know. And we'll see you all next time.